So here we go again, it's a Sunday afternoon and we are all together once more as live as live can be. And can you see what has returned behind me? Yes, the sheep are back behind my garden. Coming up today we also have Mr Steve talking about words and idioms to do with buildings and of course you are more than welcome to join in on the live chat. After all it's a Sunday afternoon it's just after two o'clock here in the UK and this is Live English. Live from Much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon this is live English. Uh, oh yes it sure is baby. here we go again it's another Sunday it's another fun day it's another time for you to improve your English we are once again live on YouTube hello hiya hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Can you see what I'm doing today? I have been very busy all week preparing something. Can you guess what it is? I'm getting in a bit of a tangle here today sorting out a certain thing which we will see more of later on. Yes I'm getting in a real mess here today find out later on why so here we are once again it's live English I can't believe that it's Sunday once more do you feel the same way as me do you feel that this year is going by so quickly it is the end of November next week I can't believe it's actually the end of November next week and then it's December December is a very busy month do you know why well there are lots of reasons why <gasps> look out the window today we are having a glorious day by the way an absolute glorious day look at that so that is a live view at the moment out of the window oh my goodness what a beautiful day we are having right here now in the UK a live picture and we can also have a look in the garden as well would you like to see the garden there it is a live view outside I know for a fact that Mr Steve was out there earlier on he was out there doing some gardening so I hope he has prepared something for today's live English stream and there it is once again a lovely live view looking across the countryside here in the UK as I mentioned earlier at the start of today's live stream the sheep are back they are would you like to have a look at the sheep they have returned to the back of the house and here they are right now oh yes they are back last week they returned and so I couldn't resist showing them today because I love it I love it when there are animals at the back of the house so there you can see the sheep are back and there are quite a few of them this year we have a lot of them there are 37 sheep at the back of the house now so that is the view outside I filmed this yesterday just to let you see the sheep and there are quite a few of them I'm not sure if they are pregnant I'm not sure if they are already expecting little lambs I'm not sure about that but they have arrived 
and they have been at the back of the house for about the past five days so I'm very very excited to see the sheep have returned oh aren't they lovely I really love the sheep so much let's have another view of the sheep here we go here's another one another shot of the sheep walking by and as I mentioned there are 37 sheep at the back of the house and one of the things to mention especially in this area the area in which I live there are many people who own dogs and they like to take their dogs for a walk through this field but of course dogs and sheep do not mix very well you will find that the dogs will will chase the sheep and sometimes they will actually attack them uh, and I know for a fact that at the back of the house there have been some some attacks on on the sheep in fact I think three years ago I think there were two sheep killed at the back of the house by dogs so I think there were some dogs that were not on their leads and they they, they escaped and they attacked two of the sheep and sadly they died so it is a very serious thing if you don't put your dogs on a lead when you go for the, through a field of sheep you can have some very negative results so I'm feeling pretty happy today because the sheep are back and I know that lots of people enjoy looking at the wildlife so I thought that's what I would do at the start of today's live stream I would show you the sheep yes they are back baby was I on time today really was I was I actually on time I can't believe that I started today's live stream at exactly two o'clock I can't remember the last time that happened talking of live English that is what we are here to do this afternoon it's myself Mr Duncan and don't forget you can catch me every week every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time live English on YouTube and you can watch this every single Sunday yes I will be here next week and the week after that and the week after that as well so there is nothing to fear I will be here throughout December and into 2019 I'm not joking so autumn is definitely here would you like to see something beautiful something that I filmed last week okay here it is ah somewhere over the rainbow looking out of my window a beautiful rainbow last week I recorded this during the week when we had some very strange rainstorms so the sun was shining and the rain was falling at the same time and of course quite often the result will be a beautiful rainbow so there you can see the view from my window last week and a rather lovely rainbow above the house isn't that nice and there you can see the little bird flying by I think it's a pigeon so there you can see something nice filmed from the house can I say once again a big thank you to those who appreciate and love to watch my nature videos so I'm I'm pleased to to hear from you if you have anything nice to add if you have anything nice to say about my video lessons feel free if you have a problem with my video lessons maybe there is something you hate about my video lessons also you can let me know but please be gentle with me because I am a very sensitive flower I am let's have a look at the live chat later on mr. Steve will be here of course and Steve at the moment is suffering from something very strange mr. Steve has contracted autumn madness we will have a look at that later on 
also we'll be talking about words and expressions to do with buildings words and expressions to do with buildings different types of buildings also the things used to construct buildings so that's what we'll be doing later on also we have the mystery idiom would you like to see the mystery idiom now okay then because I'm feeling very generous today here is today's mystery idiom right now there it is so there is the mystery idiom what do you think it is if you think you know the answer you can write it down on the live chat talking of which the live chat is now up and running let's see who is on the live chat shall we right now oh it's a busy one so far I can already see lots of people are on the live chat let's go back to the beginning and see who was first ah I see that Pedro Belmont is first on the live chat hi to you Pedro and of course you get a big round of applause as well <laughs> congratulations to you also Alam gear is here even though he retracted his message I don't know what the message was I hope it was nice matrix is also here Jimmy is here hello Jimmy nice to see you back Jimmy's hero family <laughs> also Martha in Poland Olga is here as well sweetness is here hello sweetness nice to see you back as well Shirin is here hello Shirin blue thunder also we have Julie G hello Julie G Jimmy says the week has passed the time is going very fast I know I agree with you I can't believe how fast November has gone by it's it's really really flown by Matilde is here as well watching in Colombia also we have Tan Nguyen or Tan Win watching in Vietnam I believe also we have Belarusia I wondered where you were don't forget Belarusia and Pedro are both in charge of the live chat they are the moderators on the live chat so they are in charge they will be watching very closely what you are saying Palmyra also Francisco is here hello to you as well nice to see you every single Sunday yes I will be here every Sunday until the end of the year and of course I will be with you during 2019 as well Ali is here hello to you Ali Alam is also here also Sujin hello Sujin nice to see you here today also we have how Lee and race Khan or race Khan hello sir this is race from Pakistan please can you do a live stream on history and related words to history do you know what I think that is a great idea thank you very much for your suggestion lovely very nice XN says how how is it going how is it going it is going very well but I have had a very busy week quite busy here preparing for December because lots of things are <laughs> happening during the month of December it is a very busy month Louis Mendez says according to the Guardian newspaper the area in which you live voted 63% for Brexit uh, I think you are right there yes that's true I think you are right Rosa said hello Mr Duncan and all of the moderators as well isn't that nice oh hello Tomek I didn't see you there Mr Duncan how is your toe you will be pleased to hear that my toe is feeling much better it's still slightly painful 
it aches now and again but it's much better thank you that's very kind of you Tomek thank you very much blue thunder your house is very cool oh okay then I don't know what that's in response to a friendly hello to everyone from mr. Bruno hello mr. Bruno I haven't seen you here before is it your first time please let me know oh mr. Duncan I love the use says Tias of course you e w e is a female sheep thank you very much for that the sheep look like clouds against the green sky they do look like that don't they I love sheep I, I love watching them in the field also we have Caradas here and yes Caradas says some of the sheep are hobbling they are hobbling they are having difficulty walking and that's the reason why they are doing it because they are on a slope so the sheep are actually on the side of a hill and sometimes they fall over and injure themselves so that's why some of the sheep are having difficulty walking because they have injured themselves they are slightly lame the word is lame that's a great word by the way so if something is lame it means it can't move properly it has difficulty moving or walking the sheep in our region are very different from those sheep thank you Abdul Faz of course there are many different types of sheep many different breeds of sheep some of them have white legs some of them have black legs some of them have black faces some of them have white faces some of them are very large and some of them are very small rung sack is here as well also m secker is here wow so many people watching today thank you very much for your lovely comment about the rainbow i love to see a rainbow in the sky it always cheers me up every time i see one hello mr duncan this is oliver from madagascar a big hello to Mag madagascar it's nice to see you here today thank you very much this is my first time mr duncan it is an honor to be here thank you sarah sarah jad so it is your first time i will give you a round of applause <laughs> congratulations to sarah jad for being here for the first time ever wow that's nice isn't it? i love it i love it a lot so that's the chat and now it's time to take a look at something which will give you an idea of how busy i have been this week i have been so busy do you want to know what i've been doing well this video will give you a very big clue This month is proving to be a busy one for me. I have been doing all sorts of things. Today I'm on the roof of my house fixing some festive lights to the railings above my garage. Have you noticed how important lights are during festivals and celebrations? Even the word light can have a significant meaning. We can see the light. This means that we have had a revelation if a person suddenly changes their mind about something or they have a great idea we can say that they have seen the light something that was unclear before can now be seen vividly and can be understood well that person has seen the light
These are called fairy lights. They are tiny lights that glow and twinkle. Fairy lights are often hung on Christmas trees. They create a magical atmosphere with their gentle glow. Some fairy lights flash or blink. Some are white while others are multicoloured. The name fairy lights dates back to the late 1800s and became popular after they were used as a stage prop in the opera Ilanthi, written by the composers Gilbert and Sullivan. For the opera, small electric lights were placed on the actors who were playing fairies. The name fairy lights stuck and is still used to this very day. Did you know that originally candles were used as decorations? That does not sound very safe to me. Dip, 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 dip. It is Sunday. Yes, it's a fun day. It's time to improve your English live on YouTube with me, Mr. Duncan. Coming very soon, of course, we also have my partner in crime. <laughs> we are talking Mr. Steve. Did it get colder in here or is it just me? I think it's you, Mr. Steve. That's what I think anyway. So Mr. Steve will be here in around about five minutes. And today, Mr. Steve is suffering from something we call autumn madness. There he is. Look, Steve is really enjoying himself out in the autumn weather. He's really enjoying playing with the leaves. We will see more of that later on as Mr. Steve experiences autumn madness. But what is it? What actually is it? Here's another big question for you. And this is something a lot of people in this country are asking at the moment. The question is, will it snow? At the moment, the temperature is starting to drop here in the UK but we haven't had any snow yet so don't get too excited we we don't have any snow so this snow you can see at the moment is from last winter last year but the big question is will we get any snow this year what do you think will happen do you think we will get some snow or do you think we will get no snow here in the UK. Now last year, if you remember, we had a lot of snow. We had three falls of snow. So the snow fell heavily three times. So we had a lot of snow last winter, more than we expected, in fact. So a lot of people were quite surprised by the amount of snow we had last year. So that is the big question that many people here in the UK are asking, will it snow? Will we get any snow over the next few weeks? I don't know. So far, there is no forecast of any snow. But if you remember last year, we were all very surprised by the sudden snowfall that occurred. So we're not sure we, there might be some snow. Who knows? So that is the big question. What about you? Have you ever experienced snow? Have you ever actually felt snow on your hands or your face? There is something so magical about the experience of being out on a snowy day. It really is a very special feeling. So 
that remains to be seen the live chat is very busy one more look and then we will take a little look at something else so the live chat oh my goodness so many people here today thank you very much for joining me on the live chat unfortunately I've never seen snow in my life says Pedro also Alan Gia says winter is coming again yes it is <laughs> I don't mind winter as long as I'm in the house but of course if it starts to snow I love to go out and play in the snow but normally I, I like to stay indoors during the winter months we never have any snow in Thailand imagine that can you imagine what it would be like if you had snow in Thailand I think that would be very surprising Piazada says hello sir this is the first time I am watching you hello Piazada it's nice to see you here Piazada Shalid hello sir I am watching your live program I am from Kashmir please suggest good ways to improve my English speaking well one good suggestion is to watch my live videos and of course my recorded videos as well underneath this video you will see all of my video lessons and of course you must practice English every day so if you want to improve your English you have to use it you have to practice every day do it whenever you have the chance so that is my suggestion anyway so thank you very much Piers Ad and I suppose I should say congratulations for your first ever message on the live chat <laughs> thank you Piers Zarda wow thank you very much it's lovely to see you here on the live chat and welcome also we have Raphael who says I remember last year we had lots of snow and this year I think we'll have snow as well who knows we might have a lot of snow we might have no snow some people seem to think that winter will get warmer and warmer as the time passes so who knows who knows what we will get Saturino says hello Mr Duncan also oh I think we have a donation as well from analytic brain thank you very much to analytic brain who has sent a very lovely donation there thank you very much and of course you can send live donations as well to help my work continue because I do all of this for free it doesn't cost you anything so everything you see everything you hear is all done for free do you like eating food I, I don't know about you but I love eating in fact at the moment I am in the process of losing weight I am trying to get a little slimmer because my stomach keeps getting larger and larger but do you like food I really do like food very much and I have actually made a lesson all about food and right now we are going to take a look at an excerpt from my food lesson and then after that it's Mr Steve hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how Mr Duncan Mr Duncan Mr Duncan oh hello Mr Lomax how are you what's the problem Mr. Duncan, I'm hungry. Can I have something to eat, please? Of course you can. What would you like to eat? Mm. I would like a big juicy banana, if that's okay. Hmm, banana, eh? Let me see. I've got a banana around here. So, ah, there's one. <laughs> one juicy banana. There you go. Is that okay for you? Mm. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. 
Now then, where was I? Oh yes. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we will look at a common item which is for each of us an important part of our daily life and our means of survival. Today, we will talk about food. It's scrumptious, scrumptious, tasty and sweet. It's delicious, nutritious, lots of fun to eat. You can have it hot, you can have it cold. It's easy to munch and it's easy to hold. You can eat it from a plate, you can spoon it from a dish. It's the greatest thing that you can ever wish. It's food, tasty food, scrumptious food, yummy food. It's food. There are many natural elements contained within food, such as calcium, chromium, cobalt, copper, iron, sodium, and zinc. It is worth noting that these are present in very tiny amounts, which is lucky for us because the human body only requires a very small daily amount to function properly. Keeping the balance of these elements right is very important, as too much of them is just as bad as too little. Then there is protein, which helps the body to function and stay well maintained. Protein is made up of small organic chemicals, called amino acids. These are absorbed from food during digestion and are used to create new proteins and other useful substances that the body requires. Finally, let us not forget one of the most important intakes that the body requires in order to function and survive. Water. <laughs> Around 60% of your body is made up of water. The water in your body keeps you cool. It helps to keep the joints of your bones soft and supple. It carries nutrients to your tiny skin cells and it helps to carry away all of the waste and toxins which would otherwise build up and cause you to become ill. Water is being constantly used and lost by the body through sweating and going to the toilet. Needless to say, you must drink plenty of water every day. Meals and food have different names depending on their size, when they are eaten and where they are served. Hamburgers and other similar food is easy to make and serve, so it is called convenience food or fast food. McDonald's KFC and Burger King are all classed as fast food restaurants. A quick small meal is called a snack or a bite. A meal where you select and serve your own food is called a buffet. A large meal served to many people in a hall is called a banquet. Here's a good question. Is milk a food or a drink? I would let you find out the answer to that one. Remember, milk and cheese contains lots of calcium and calcium is good for your bones. Ah, delicious. There are many ways of expressing hunger. I feel hungry. I'm starving. 
I'm famished. I'm ravenous. I've got to eat soon or I will faint. My stomach is telling me to eat. Wow, I really have to eat something. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. <laughs> Cooking food has become a very popular activity for many people and these days there are lots of cookery programs on television presented by celebrity chefs, although some of them do tend to be quite rude and impolite, such as this guy. Welcome to Go Cook Yourself. I'm Dave Nasty and I'm a chef and I'm rude to people. If you don't like that, then you can go cook yourself. This is a potato. I like chopping them up into little pieces and then boiling them in water. Then I mash them with butter. It's called mashed potatoes. Can you mash up potatoes? I guess you can't, because you're not a chef like me. I hate everyone. I'm Dave Nasty, saying go cook yourself. Goodbye. Do here we go. Yes, it's Sunday and we are live, very, very live. And just to show how live we are, I am now saying that it is 20 minutes away from three o'clock here in the UK. Yes, check your watch right now. It is definitely live. Talking of which, here is the man who isn't so much a fountain of knowledge, more like a dripping tap. Of knowledge it is mr. Steve hello hello everybody I'm not sure I like that introduction mr. Duncan a dripping tap of knowledge does that mean I don't know very much is that what you're trying to say mr. Duncan did, did you like my <laughs> I gave you some lovely applause oh I didn't hear that because we can't really hear it here can we can't we I could hear it vaguely in the background I could I'll have to listen to it later I could hear it in my head well, I've been watching the lap. We're late today. I'm 10 minutes later than normal, Mr. Duncan. Don't worry, we've got plenty of time. We are on until four, yes. four o'clock. Trying to keep me away from the lovely viewers, aren't you? Trying to, you're taking 10 minutes off. Next week will be 15 minutes, then 20. And I'll be just down to five minutes. I'll be just saying, hello, goodbye. Mr. Steve is worried that I am cutting his time. Until he disappears completely. Anyway, I was looking at the live stream okay. before coming on. In fact, I was doing some gardening. Mm. Before. I always try to fit in an hour's gardening now before coming live on stream. Because we, this time of the year, we can't do it afterwards because it'll be dark by the time we finish uh, the live stream. So I try to get in the bit of gardening beforehand. But I still had time to look at the live chat, uh, which um, JC Geordie's had an operation. Okay. An angioplasty. Oh, that's is that something to do with your heart? Yes, she's had some little stents put in, in her heart. So uh, that's quite a you know, it's not a insubstantial procedure. It's not. So it's we a, hope you're well and recovering. It's not a simple procedure. It's very complex. So any operation that you have on your heart, it I would imagine it's very very. What what would you say? How would you describe that? Essential. 
essential yes it, it is also a very complicated operation so well, wow so how are you at the moment jc geordie are you recovering she's recovering yes so yes we wish jc geordie well um and uh, you know if for what was quite a significant operation yeah i'm sorry uh, an essential uh, operation yeah. so so i should apologize first of all for for missing the message so it was on the live chat it was on the live chat but of course at the beginning there's a lots of messages so you you'll probably you don't see them all they're going off the screen yes i, I didn't I've got see it to have a look so apologies for not seeing your message and i hope you are feeling much better angio yes. angioplasty so that's mm. where they repair i think that's where they repair the the actual valves no i think they put little they just open up your open up ah. your blood vessels with little stents so little so they, they put tubes. So, they put something inside to, to make the, the the tubes wider i think so i think that's what it is yes i'm not a heart surgeon so i don't know uh but uh well hope you're feeling better and uh sounds like you've had it done before from what you were saying oh okay but you are in the right place because we will always cheer you up we will gladden your heart literally we will we'll make you laugh uh caradas says uh, he's noticed the sheep and that some of them are hobbling yes so he's used a good phrase there hobbling hobble it means that they're they've got one's got a poorly leg and can't walk properly so they're sort of hobbling they're sort of not walking properly there they are and uh, we we always laugh about there's one hobbling there at the back <laughs> uh because sheep are always so afraid of everything they run away and they injure them they injure themselves they must be very prone to getting their legs injured yes well uh, because also as i mentioned earlier the field is on a slope field is on a slope so they keep when they run away they actually trip and hurt them there is one now you can see it yes it's limping <laughs> it is lame there's not going to be meat, much meat on that leg oh okay <laughs> thank you steve and uh, uh, uh gf brum um says that uh, when they were growing up uh, there were sheep dogs that would herd the sheep and bring them in in the evening mm. um, round here they still use them they do still use sheep dogs mm. here in fact the the uh the farmer that brought those sheep has a couple of sheep dogs mm. uh and uh, of course they sometimes use quad bikes now don't they what to round the sheep up? yes they use quad bikes <laughs> i thought you were going uh, to say that the sheep were on the quad bikes <laughs> <laughs> the sheep were riding the quad i would love to see a sheep riding a quad bike <laughs> maria says have we still got the spiders yes we have but hopefully they'll be gone soon yes because my friend said that uh, he got another friend who wanted to uh, to look after them for a while yes. so uh, hopefully we'll get rid of them before christmas so we've we've had these spiders for nearly 10 months it was only supposed to be for a few weeks but but they will be going soon and and to be honest good riddance jimmy asks are you back in wikipedia yet oh that's a good question yes i did check a couple of days ago and i'm not there right so we're starting this campaign again some horrible person i think it's a rival a rival english teacher mm. actually removed me from the much wenlock page you had a page a mention uh yeah an entry in the wikipedia page under much wenlock yeah saying that you were a notable english teacher a notable somebody a notable person we're just reminding in case anybody watching didn't hear what we said last week somebody has removed mr duncan <laughs> from the much wenlock page <laughs> and we're going to appeal we're going to ask again if somebody can add mr duncan back in you need to have privileges or something don't you but yes you you need to have editing privileges editing privileges on wikipedia so if someone can put me onto wikipedia onto the not not my own page but on the much wenlock page and then i will be there again because where you rightfully belong i belong there i i do a lot for much wenlock i i promote it all around the world and the main thing is that you're a notable english teacher and you deserve to have a place on wikipedia and the fact that somebody put you in and then somebody removed you i think that's disgraceful mm, i think it's disgraceful. it's a bit of jealousy it's disgusting yes because it is a fact there's nobody else doing what you're doing no in england let alone just much when that's it 
on. Uh, so anyway, just uh, blowing your trumpet for you, Mr. Duncan. Uh, because uh, please will somebody add Mr. Duncan back on to Wikipedia. And if you do, we'll make a special mention. Tell us if you do and we'll make a special mention. And uh, hmm, well, we could send a T-shirt, couldn't we? I will do my robot. Name on. I will do my robot dance for you. Huh? We'll send you a little present. Yes, bribery and corruption. <laughs> Is that it, Sir Steve? Anything else to mention? That's all I could. Uh, there were lots of comments, lots of lovely comments from people. Quite a few new people as well. Some, uh, I think the somebody from Madagascar. Can't <gasps> remember their name now. Okay. Uh, we've seen lots of programs about Madagascar because that's a very popular place for naturalists to go and film. Yes, not na the, not naturists. Naturalists like Na David Attenborough. So naturalists are people that are that are interested in wildlife. Naturists are people who like to take their clothes off and walk around in in the fresh air with no clothes. So there is a difference. Naturalist, naturalist and naturist. If I'm not right, <laughs> the programs we've seen about Madagascar, which is an island just off Africa somewhere, I believe. Uh, they've got these spiny forests, haven't they? Is that Madagascar? Uh, the, Where the, the, yes. the lemurs are, are leaping onto these uh, spiny uh, plants. OK. And we've seen this programme. We don't know how they don't kill themselves. Yeah. Are they like cacti or something like that? I don't know. We've You're... seen this programme. <laughs> Somebody who I can't remember what your name is now. Somebody who's on from Madagascar, tell us about these, if I'm right, about the spiny forests. <laughs> And you've got these little, they're not monkeys, they're lemurs, okay. I think. And they leap around. And anyway. What what I do know about Madagascar is there are lots of animals that are only found in Madagascar. Exactly. And also that's where Charles Darwin came up with the idea of the theory of evolution. So Charles Darwin it was there, got... Mr. Duncan. got it was? You're thinking of the Galapagos Islands. Oh, it's the Galapagos Islands. Well, they're, they're two very small islands, you see, and they look very similar. <gasps> If you close your eyes and put your hands on your head, they do look very similar. It's a good job I'm here. Galapagos Islands and Madagascar. He probably went there as well. Did Disney make a movie about the Galapagos Islands? Everyone's made a movie about that. Or was it, or was it Madagascar? I there, think there are special tourist trips to, uh, to the Galapagos Islands. Galapagos? Yes. Uh, but I don't know how we got onto that subject, but uh, <laughs> you took us there. I've I been, did. I've been true. very busy this week, Steve, you putting have. putting up the Christmas lights. And Mr. Steve gave me a surprise. He's actually given me some lovely new lights to put on the house. Right. I uh, did. Uh, there we go. Can you see the new lights? So these are some new lights that Mr. Steve has given. I, he gave me a nice surprise. So there you can see some new lights that I put up this week, and they are called festoon lights festoon is not a great word it Fes is festoon what does it mean do you know where it comes from no well it comes from a feast where garland and flowers were hung in lovely string arrangements so they were hung up and so the feast of celebration so that's why we have festoon for like, like for festival, festival, for celebration. festivals or, or special feasts oh. that were held. So it is a very, very old word. And there you can see some festoon lights, which are now outside the house. I hope the neighbours, <laughs> I really hope the neighbours will enjoy looking at those. Talking of Christmas. Yeah, so I said, buy those lights, Mr. Day, your early Christmas present, Mr. Duncan. Thank you. Get up on the ladder and put them up. And that's what Pronto. I that's what I did. But talking of Christmas, do you think that it's too early? Yes. Oh, OK. Well, that was quick. I don't want to talk about Christmas, Mr. Duncan. Do you think it's too early to talk about Christmas? And there you can see last year. So these video clips you can see now, they were actually filmed last year. But do you think it is too early to talk about Christmas? And there you can see some lovely festive arrangements in the local bookshop where I live in Much Wenlock. What else? Oh look there's the square, the famous square in Much Wenlock and you can see there are lots of Christmas lights but even though we only have we only have about is it four weeks or five weeks so about five, five, weeks, five weeks five weeks till Christmas 
Is it too early to talk about Christmas? So what do you think? Do you think it is too early to mention Christmas? Steve has already given his answer. He thinks, yes, it is too early. I don't think you should talk about Christmas till at least the 1st of December. <laughs> uh, and really, I think it should be two weeks before. Two weeks before uh, and no more than that. That's my opinion. But of course, the shops want you to buy lots of things. And uh, But I don't think you should start mentioning it, talking about it. Um, well, maybe for children. <laughs> I mean, when do Advent calendars start? On the 1st of December, don't well, they? Well, yes, I must admit, I always get very excited around this time because I, I love to put the Christmas lights up. I'm like, a, I'm like a big child, really. He is. That's why he likes the lights everywhere. I love the lights. I love the festivity. And of course, last week, the temperature in the UK was very high. So I decided to do it last week whilst the weather was really, really good. So. Yes, but what you wanted to do, Mr Duncan, with those festoon lights mm -hmm. is you wanted to put them on the highest part of the house, didn't oh, you? Yes. You wanted to hang those from the gutter right on the top of the of the house. So uh, where the roof, the lowest part of the roof, I wanted to hang the lights along there. On the... Uh, but. But, yes, but... So you said, oh, oh, I'm going to hang them up there. And I thought, there's no way Mr. Duncan is going to go that high up the ladders. But anyway, I was, there's no point in me saying you'll never do that because that would have made Mr. Duncan even more determined to do it. So, so he put the ladders up. So you decided just to let me go ahead I and... I just decided to let you go ahead. And do it. I try not to talk over you today. You did berate me last week for talking over you. So I shall try and look for c clues uh, when as I can just interject with my sentences and my opinions. <laughs> I'll put my ma my hand over your mouth. Without uh, without interrupting you or talking over you. I okay. shall try my hardest this week. OK, we've got the message. Tell anyway, it, anyway. Tell us the story. I digress. Tell us the story. That means I digress. It means I was talking about something else apart from the main subject. Uh, so um, you put the ladders up and I thought, Mr Duncan, if you go up those ladders and you fall off, you will fall to your death. Yes, probably. Because it was very high and you got, what happened? You got about halfway up and then decided, oh dear. And I was quite worried because I thought, I don't want Mr Duncan going up there because the no, well, last thing I want to do is have to do this show all on my own. So I got halfway up the ladder and then started <laughs> screaming like a girl. You didn't really scream. I was, I was a little worried and afraid, mm. so I didn't go to the top. So instead, I had to put the lights a little lower down yes. at a slightly more <laughs> agreeable height. A height that if you fell, you would survive. <laughs> so, so what do you think the height that you could fall from safely? So is there a height? Because I, sometimes you hear of people who are just walking along and they fall over in the street and, the, and they die. So, so I suppose there is no safe height. So I suppose you could mm. you could you could die if you fell from any height. Well, uh, but the your, but of course the higher up you are, your body is physically <laughs> designed to be able to withstand. I mean, the way we've evolved, mm -hmm. uh, the human body, the impact. We, apparently, the, the the sort of maximum impact that we can we can survive is around thirty miles an hour. Oh, okay then. If you start going, I mean, if you think of the speed you can run at uh, and you hit your head, you can anything more. That, that's why people die in cars, obviously, because the human body isn't designed to okay. withstand impacts over a certain this, speed. This is we're, so, we're, um, we're supposed to be cheering J.C. Geordie up. <laughs> this is this is not very cheerful. <laughs> but yes, if you, I think, oh, I mean, okay. as you say, if you fall. On your, your head can withstand okay. certain impacts. We, we've, but yeah. we've got it, yes. Okay, I don't know then. what the height is, but okay. I shouldn't think it's more than about... He still carries on. ...three times your own height, something okay, I, like that. OK, stop. I'm trying to... Uh, th that's my... And of course, it depends on whether you fall on soft ground, hard ground, what part of your body hits the floor first. I think, I think really... You know what I should have done? When I went up the other day to put the lights up on the side of the house, I should have had a little parachute that would open and then I could I could come down to the ground very safely 
That wouldn't have worked, Mr. Duncan. Why? Because you wouldn't have had time to deploy the parachute. So uh, you have to pull the cord. Deploy it. So what you should have done is put, uh, got the bed from upstairs and put the mattress on the ground. Mm. And uh, then if you'd fallen, you'd have fallen onto the mattress and that would have broken your fall. I could have actually strapped the mattress to my back. It's not the first yes. time I've done that in my life. Really? Yeah. So we've got some words to what look at. Would, to? would you like to have a look at the live chat? Yes, I would. I haven't looked at it yet. Not for a while, not since I was upstairs. No. OK, then. That's a strange thing to explain. <laughs> so there's the live chat and well, lots of people on the live chat. Oh, dear. Let's have a look. So thank you very much once again to Analytic Brain for your, your very generous donation. Thank you very much there on the super chat. We have... Oh, yes. somebody said something about Madagascar then. Where? No, we are in the period to talk about Christmas, says a bit further down. Uh, Pedro, I'm well, not I'm sure. Go I'm going think. up first. Okay, just, okay. just give me a chance. <laughs> it's all right. We're not going anywhere. Madagascar, in my family, that is a joke. They say that the capital of Madagascar is very confusing. I think the name. Oh, yes, I, I can't pronounce that. Can you pronounce that, Steve? Which what, the one at the beginning? Ant yeah. Antarara. Antarararariva. 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 Yes, apparently that's the capital of uh, Madagascar. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. We want more information on Madagascar. Perhaps we will get that. JC Geordie says, yes, Charles Darwin has been to South America in the Galapagos Islands and also the continental areas such as Rio de Janeiro and also... Are you going to read that for me? Atay no. <laughs> Atay Atayapulco or Palco. Atayapalco. I'm not going to try and read that again. I think YouTube will come around and push a custard pie into my face. No, we are. No, it is too early to talk about Christmas. Oh, I think Pedro agrees with you, Steve. Oh, definitely. Yes. So it's too early. George Dow says, yes, I think it's too early to talk about Christmas. I hate those stores, the mm. stores and the shops that hurry to make us all feel that the year has ended. Yes, I suppose so. But I suppose that the thing is lots of shops have to all try to make money. I think that's the reason why. Czech Republic is suffering from temperatures of 30 degrees. Where, where is that? Just right at the top. Oh, OK. Let's have a look. Uh, Julie G says yes. it is unpleasant this hot weather in the Czech Republic. Everyone is suffering 30 degrees at the moment. I thought it would be winter in the th Czech Republic. I thought it would be quite cool there yes. now. How surprising. I'm surprised. I'm shocked. Very shocked. It is already full of Christmas decorations in every store, says Rosa. And also, who else is here? Hello, Mr. Duncan. So glad to join your live lesson. Yaroslava. Hello, Yaroslava. Is it your first time here today? Is it your Hello. first? Hello to you. Wow, lots of new people here. And finally, before we go to our lovely words today, we are talking about words to do with buildings and things used to build houses and all sorts of other things buildings roofs yes that was a very generous donation thank you very much to analytic brain once again thanks a lot for that and also a big hello to caridas what child hasn't tried to launch themselves with an umbrella yes i must admit i've never tried i've never tried to jump off a building whilst holding an umbrella it, it doesn't would turn inside out yes it, it, it wouldn't be very it wouldn't end well i don't think so it wouldn't end well promise basse says hello mr duncan would you mind doing a live lesson about the houses of parliament and hello and greetings from middleburg in mm. zealand which is in the netherlands hello to you to promise basse or bassi it's a bit like Shirley Bassey. I was going to say, if you uh, can, if are you related to Shirley Bassey, <laughs> the famous singer? If you are, then um, 
Yes. I, no, we could do that. Something about the Houses of Parliament. Yes. We I tell you something what, next week. You know what Let's I would love that. to do? I would love to do. I would love to actually do something where we go to London and actually do a live stream from London. But because of the situation now in London, if you walk around with a camera or if you are doing filming or anything that looks out of the ordinary, you will often be stopped by the police. So it's very hard to do that now. Filming around London is not as easy as it used to be. Pierre uh, Zarda Charlotte says, please visit Kashmir. You'll love it. Oh, I bet we would because uh, Kashmiri food is renowned for being delicious. Uh, and we love a good curry, don't we, Mr. Duncan? I do like curry, even though the after effect isn't very good. Uh, I don't know the specifics of Kashmir food. I think it's probably vegetarian. Oh, really? Oh, of course. Yes, I suppose it would be. Yes. Please tell it if it's India. Definitely. So lots of vegetables. Yes. Mm. Kashmiri food. It's got a particular blend of spices that's different to other other parts of India. Oh. Uh, I hope I'm right about that. Anyway, I want to learn English, but it's too difficult. I live in Brazil. Well, Philippe, you have come to the right place because it's English all the way on a Sunday afternoon with Mr. Duncan. That's me and Mr. Steve as well. Four minutes past three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Here's an interesting question before we get into something else. Do you ever sulk? Sulk. It's a great word. If you sulk, it means you go into a bad mood, normally over a specific thing or a reason. So to sulk means you become very gloomy and moody and upset over maybe one particular thing. So perhaps thing. So perhaps you wanted something and then you couldn't have it. And so you sulk. You get into a mood yes you become difficult to deal with mm. so if you uh, yes that's right if you your parents you asked your parents could i have a new bike and they said no you can't have a new bike and they get upset about it and go into a sulk huh. so they become very uh obnoxious and uh won't talk to you become difficult refuse to do things that you ask them to do because they're sulking because they didn't get what they wanted. Mm. So uh, it's a great word. So I don't think adults sulk very much. I think you can people can sulk in relationships, can't they? Are, are you sure uh, about I think adults sometimes um, are worse than children, especially in relationships. So maybe the wife might might have one thought about something uh, and the husband has the opposite thought. And maybe the wife says, no, you can't do that or you can't go out tonight. And so the husband will will silk. Hmm. OK, hmm. I'll stay in then. Hmm. So, yes, I think adults, sometimes adults can be worse than children. Vlad has asked something which is right up our street. Wait there. Let me just put it onto the screen before so we... we say something is right up our street. It means that we're we know a lot about it and we're very keen to talk about it. If you say something's right up your street, that means uh, that uh, you're very enthusiastic to talk about it. Oh. It, uh, so, yes, Vlad has said, we'd like to hear about 80s music in your classes. Any chance some Sunday? Well, we can't play the music. We can't play it, no. Unfortunately, because of copyright rules. You know, YouTube is terrible now because you can't do anything. You can't sing a song or say anything or even... <laughs> you can't even hum a tune anymore and you will get punished by YouTube. But we can talk about the artists and the singers. Oh, uh, I could talk all afternoon. Exactly. It's right up your street it's right at my street it is it is a subject that i'm very fond of so yes because we are we are children of the 80s we we grew up during the 1970s and 1980s so mr steve and myself we we both grew up during that time so we are very familiar 
with music that's two things next week has the parliament and 80s music okay well maybe not next week because i have something else planned next week oh what's that next week we are going to have a fashion show a fashion show yes mr steve and myself we are going to be beautiful sexy models oh, well i'm used to that of course on the catwalk in my uh, younger years of course i was a model yes really well i i, I was as well Yves Saint Laurent. I, I used to do modelling. Gautier, I'm, I'm, they I'm not, all wanted me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's true, I was. I was a I was a sexy model in my teenage years. But no, I'll go into not that, really. Mr Duncan. Not really, I'm joking. You have people looking you up. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Yes. Anyway, I've got some words. Mr Steve anyway. has got... Anyway. Mr Steve has got some words... And they are words and phrases. No, quick, go back. Go back to the live to... chat. I saw the word Mustang. Wait there. You've got to calm down a bit, Steve. Words to do with buildings. <laughs> We've done the live chat now. We can't we can't just Somebody keep... Somebody mentioned a Mustang. OK, let's have it's a look. It's Jeff. I knew it was Jeff. I couldn't tell, but I knew it was. <laughs> Mr. Steve sulks about his Mustang. Oh, OK. Hmm. Well... I'm not really sulking because um, I'd have to sulk at myself. Uh, but but yes, no, I'm uh, I'm I don't think you sulk. I think you pine pine. Yes. So if you pine for something, it means you want it to happen. You 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 really emotionally distraught <laughs> because you can't have so it. So this is you not talking over. Yes, me. that's me. Yes. <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> You, you don't seem to have changed oh. at all. You're, you're still talking over the top of me. So if you pine for something, it means you want something. You desire it. You you really want it with all your heart. Yes. So, yes. So if you do that, you pine. Although I don't think you're sulking. So Mr. Steve might... Are you OK there? Mr. Steve might sulk if someone says that you can't have a Ford Mustang. So Steve might sometimes sulk if he thinks that he can't have one. If I asked you to buy me one and you said, no, I'm not going to, I might sulk. Well, I'm not going to buy Can you. Can we a... just go up uh, because okay, somebody's then. telling us about Kashmiri food? No, it's not. Uh, it contains many non-veg food. It's very different from Indian food. Well, Kashmir is a, is, a, is a country on its own, isn't it, I believe? Piers Zad says, no, it is not. It is called... Was Waswan Waswan and it contains many non vegetable dishes. All oh, right, okay. Well, that sounds meat, even then. that sounds even better because I love meat. Exactly. I like to get some meat. Pedro is asking, do we like Elton John, Phil Collins, and Pet Shop Boys? Uh, no, uh, a little bit, and yes. So Elton John, I'm not a big fan of Elton John. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan. I like some of his songs. Not many. Phil Collins. Yes, OK. He was very good with Genesis. Had a few big hits. Do you, did you know that with Genesis, Phil Collins wasn't the original lead singer? Oh, okay. He was actually the drummer. The lead singer was... Oh, I'm trying to think who it was now. <laughs> I think it was Peter Gabriel was the lead singer. Really? Yeah, Peter Gabriel was the lead singer of... Genesis and he left and so they had no singer and Phil Collins wasn't supposed to sing on any of their songs and so they said Phil you've got quite a good singing voice would you like to have a go at singing and that's what happened so after their singer after their vocalist left they had to find somebody else to do it so that's why Phil Collins became the singer in Genesis somebody asked further down is sulking the same as angry um, not really, no. No, so angry means you just get into a temper. But sulking is the opposite. You normally don't do anything. So you normally go very quiet or you do nothing. So you don't really do anything if you sulk. You just do this. Yes, and you're, 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 uh, you're not accepting what somebody said to you about some bad news. Or yes. Say somebody, you, you, your parents asked you to... You wanted a bike and they said no. Instead of just accepting that perhaps they couldn't afford it or it wasn't your birthday or something, you, you, you won't accept it and then you'll try to punish them.
by not talking to them, not cooperating with them when meals are ready, not eating your food, things like that. Yes. Vitali, Vitali or Vitali, Vitali Grabar says, I was very excited when I saw the title of the stream. I got super excited. I love buildings and everything that has to do with DIY. Do, do it yourself. I have I have made all my furniture by myself. Great to be here. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us today. Could you make me some bedside cabinets? <laughs> I'll ch I'll send you the sizes, uh, Vitali, uh, because uh, the bed where it's located, uh, it's very difficult to fit standard bedside cabinets that you buy from a shop because they're yeah. too big. So I want them quite narrow. Uh, with a couple of drawers uh, i'll send you the dimensions and uh, you can make them for me thank you very much and uh, and then uh, they will arrange transport okay that sounds that sounds like a terrible idea ah not what? a separate country yet we, we've we've got we've got to we've got to move on a bit steve Peard, here. well appeared as is, is last, giving us a... last week you were complaining that we didn't have enough time yeah that's it a region occupied by india pakistan and china Yes, mm, it's it's not on the screen. It's not on the screen, by mm, the way. Well, there we go. So what what's that? Uh, Kashmir isn't a separate country yet, <laughs> but they want to be separate. I think. I think that's yeah. Yes. What I meant. Well done, Steve. Right, so yes, yeah, so I almost got it right. Yes, yeah, so you you are literally the dripping tap of knowledge. Oh right. <laughs> so let's have a look at some words. If Steve will let me. If I don't see, I'm gonna. Close my eyes so I don't see the uh... words to do with buildings, words to do with parts of buildings and different types of buildings as well. So Mr. Steve is going to show us right now the first one. Are you ready, Steve? The first ones. Yes, I'm ready. OK, I'm ready. let me just put you back on just so we can see your lovely, lovely face. There it is. Right. So the first set of words are connected with uh, have the word house in them or something to do with a house okay. which obviously is a building okay yes <laughs> so a house a house is definitely a building first one is first first phrase is household name oh okay household name Good. which is if you describe something as a household name or a person as a household name it means they're very popular they're known everywhere in households everywhere or in one specific location or everywhere in a country mm -hmm. it could be a person an object a thing anything T television this phrase used to be used before uh in more local areas so you could say somebody was well-known performer there might be a singer or some kind of artist uh in a town and everybody knew them and they were a household name. Oh, have you seen John uh, or Alice? Oh, did you see them last night in, in, the, in the hall performing? They were excellent. Everybody talking about them. And then when television came along, people became household names all over the country because they could see yes. them on TV. So a household name for an object would be something like a, a hoover, which is a type of vacuum cleaner. Or it could be, you could say an iPhone is a, is a, is a is a is a household name because yes. everybody knows about it. A person, you could say, Mr. Duncan, is a household name in many parts of the world through his English teaching. I'm not sure about that. A household name, somebody who's popular or something that's popular. It could be a pop group. A fo footballer could be a household name. David Beckham is a household name. Everybody knows about him. Uh, so that's household name. Uh, here's a phrase. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Yes, that's like a proverb. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Exactly. Well, actually, it was Abraham Lincoln oh. that first used this phrase, apparently, in the US of A in 1885. When he was doing one of his famous speeches, he made man, many famous speeches. And it means really things will work out when there is unity amongst all the individuals uh, in a task. So if you want to get something, if you've got a group of people and you want to get something done, uh, then you've got to have unity within that group. Everybody's got to be singing from the same song sheet. OK. And everyone must be ag agreed. Otherwise... Yes. 
everything will fall down. So if you so, want to, if you want to do something, uh, which at the time he wanted to abolish slavery, then you can't have a group of people saying one thing, a group of people saying another. So you've got to bring everybody together. Yes, unity. Uh, the workers. Here's, here's another example of using the phrase: the workers need to form a union, because uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So mm. if everybody is arguing arguing among themselves or amongst themselves, then you won't achieve what you want to achieve. You've got to be united, and that's just a phrase that means everybody's got to agree. And then you can move forward with whatever it is you want to do. A house divided against itself cannot stand. In mm. other words, you can't complete what you want to do. That's it. So, so in, in many situations, you need everyone to be united. Or united. To, or to follow the same way of thinking. So you might talk about the political situation in many countries now. You can see that there, are, there is a lot of division uh, here in the UK, for example, and in the USA. So a lot of people talk about there are divisions. So sometimes if people do not join together, if there isn't unity, quite often it will not stand or things will be disrupted. So, yes, I think yes. that's, quite, that's a very good one. Sometimes you want to achieve something quite important, uh, maybe socially. Maybe you, there's a particular group of people that we need, need uh, support and standing up for. Uh, well, women's rights is a popular one now. But if women who wanted women's rights to become more popular were all arguing among themselves, nothing would get achieved. So they have to be, if you've got a cause that's important, you've all got to unite and move forward together. Otherwise, you're, it'll just fall and nothing will happen. A few people are saying that that's actually a biblical passage. It could well be, could well be. Another, but, uh, Abraham Lincoln first used it. Uh, okay, well, I th what, what Abraham Lincoln was around before the Bible? Well, I think he, if it was in the Bible, he he sort of used it and made it popular. Yes, maybe he paraphrased. So another uh, one. Here we go. House of. If you've got a house of something, you're looking puzzled, Mr. Duncan. Hmm. A house of. That is an important group of people or a reigning group of people the house of or important people like the house of commons the house of lords in the uk or house of representatives it means a group of people in that case they're all voting and passing laws but it just means an important group of people and you call them a house of something so if you've got for example a, a reigning uh, the reigning monarch. We got, obviously we've got Queen Elizabeth here. Yes, but this week a lot of people talking about Prince Charles. He will be the next king. So ah uh, yes. Once the Queen dies, we we will have King Charles. We will, but King Charles and the Queen and her mother and father are all part of the House of Windsor, the House of Windsor. So it's a group that is the current reigning family, the family that are are the King and Queen or king or queen of this country. You call it the, the House of Windsor. Mm. In Saudi Arabia, you've got the House of Saud, uh, which comes from a particular king uh, and all his descendants who, who, are, who are now reigning in that country today. Yes. So it's the house of something. And then in fashion and in uh, shops, mm. you, you, you like have the House of Dior. You know, or the fashion house, the house of Dior. It sounds very important yes. if you put house of something. Uh, because you've got house of commons, house of Windsor, all those important groups. Out, then if, you, if you've got a company and you put house in front of it, it makes it sound very grand yes. and important. Yes. House of Fraser is a... Is a is house a, of what? House of Fraser is, is, a, is a shop, yes. isn't it? Big department store... Uh, in this country, but quite often fashion uh, companies will will call themselves houses, hmm. house fashion houses. Yes. So uh, places places where the designers are, and, and so it's one company. So quite often they use uh, it to describe a company. That's right. So or or a, a reigning monarch. So when we say reign, we don't mean reign that falls. We mean reign means to rule over something. So the spelling is different. Shall I have a go at the spelling? No. OK. I think 
is it? R E I. Fact. Okay then. So, do you have another one, Steve? Right. So house of. <laughs> we have thirty-five minutes left. Oh, I can't pick this one up, Mr. Duncan. House of Cards. Oh, okay. House then. of Cards. House of Cards, eh? Oh, how did you get? Where did you get that from, Mr. Duncan? You, you mean th this House of Cards? A House of Cards. Where did you get that from? Anyway, you must have guessed I was going to put that one up. Well, as you can see, if you're trying to build something, or there's a TV show as well. There is, but get, put that other one back up. There we go. So you're trying to build something making made of cards. What's the What's the one thing that is uh, not very good about it? Uh, it's flimsy. It's a flimsy structure. It can yeah. easily fall down. And when we use the phrase house of cards, we mean a flimsy structure, a flimsy arrangement that's in danger of collapsing. We don't normally refer to buildings. We're using it metaphorically. We're not literally meaning a building made of cards or something mm. made of... We're normally referring to a company or a, a political... Something like that. So, for, for example, the company collapsed after only six months in business because it was built on a house of cards mm. or built of a house of cards. So something that's fragile or flimsy or not very well built or constructed. Yes. Yeah, so the company, they started a company, perhaps they didn't employ the right people or the idea wasn't very good in the first place or they sold it at the wrong price. They, they were disorganised in the way they set it all up and the company failed. And you can say it failed because it was it was built on a house of cards. It was just it was wasn't very well put together. OK, uh, the proposal, you can have it like a proposal. So you might want to make a proposal in the in the, in the House of Parliament and uh, the MP doesn't do it, put it, construct the arguments very well. And you can say the proposal collapsed as it was just a house of cards. Mm. It wasn't thought through properly. So if you want to form something and you, you, you want it to be solid, based on a solid, firm foundations. We're using building uh, uh, metaphors, really, here. So that's it. A flimsy structure or a flimsy arrangement that can easily fall down. Mm. So it some was built on a house of cards. That's it. So, so not, not the TV show. No. I know, I know there is a TV show called House of Cards. Uh, so, so it's not this. In fact, it's not this at all. It is actually this. House of Cards. So uh, uh, I would say the the, the actor that uh, was uh, uh, axed from the leading role in the House of Cards. You could say that his uh, career was built on a House of Cards. Yes, ironically, uh, because ironically because he was up to no good with women, and uh, that was sooner or later going to come up. No. Well, he was up to no good with people. Yes. He was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. It wasn't uh, women. Okay then. Well, he was in a, yes inappropriately. Uh, what would you say? So Kevin Spacey allegedly built his. We've got to say allegedly. Allegedly. Well, if it's allegedly, why why did he lose his job? <laughs> so so if somebody alleges something, if they say something, you can lose your job. So say so, yeah yeah that happened. That that person did that, and then they lose their job. That's not very fair, is it? <laughs> so right, Ke Kevin one. Spacey's career fell like a house of cards yes oh the, the structure upon his his career was built you could say it had a fatal flaw in, in in like the fatal flaw in the construction of a building sooner or later he was going to be found out for his bad behavior mm. and uh, it got out and his career has fallen apart like a like a house of cards like a house of cards i don't think anyone ever said that have they <laughs> they're the first i think they have of course we don't know if anything's proved but there we go Here's another one. Public house. Public house. Public house is just a place, a tavern, a bar where alcohol is licensed for sale. So commonly in the UK, they are this word public house is abbreviated to just pub, P-U-B, just pub. So we've only got that bit of it. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it, Mr. Duncan, because uh, there we go. No, that's, <laughs> it's all back to front. What people don't understand is that they, 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 I'm watching myself on the monitor, but everything's back to front. Pub. Yes. That's what it's shortened to, public house. The place where you see lots of people drinking and having a good time. You look through the window. They're all, we, look at, we, we go there to, to Much Wenlock and there's a, a pub there. And yes. we look through the window and they're all drinking away with their beer, yes. singing songs. 
Uh, but we never go in because because they're all local people and they'd stare at us and yes. and uh, they they might beat us up. But you can also call it a tavern. A tavern. Tavern, yes. in pub, or public house. A place where they sell alcohol, but people, members of the public, go in and pay L and drink. You're you're my best friend. You're you're Steve. Steve, have I ever told you that you're you're my best friend, Steve? <laughs> we don't drink, do we, Mr. Duncan? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Oh, he's got liver disease from all that abuse of alcohol over many years. Well, yes, uh, we don't, my mother always used to say she was afraid of pubs because uh, they used to have a reputation. When she was growing up, she's, she used to tell me she used to run past pubs because they were always full of rowdy people, drinking, and, uh, you know, you, they, they had a reputation for people going in there not having particularly good reputations. Uh, of course, that's not really the case now. Um, rowdy? Pubs are always rowdy, aren't I thought, they? I thought you said randy. Rowdy, rowdy. Lots oh, okay. of noise going on because people are drinking and having a good time. OK. Uh, talking, talking of time. Penthouse. <laughs> penthouse. I'm is not that, talking about a magazine, Mr Duncan. Is, is that the magazine with the naked ladies? Is that still going? I, can't, I don't know. A penthouse is an apartment uh, situated on the roof of a building, often with a terrace. Uh, and uh, so it's uh, usually in a block of flats and uh, on the top, it's flat on the top of the block of flats. And you've normally got a, you can have, well, either it's the, the, the top, the very top part, the top mm -hmm. apartments, or there could be a separate one built right on the top of the block of flats hmm. uh, and it's got a terrace and you can look out and you've got a lovely view so the penthouse suite or the penthouse apartments are regarded as the best hmm. the most luxurious exclusive places to live normally they're in on an the, apartment block normally they're on the top floor that's what i said so yes. they're on the top floor they're normally very big and sometimes they have more than one level as well so the penthouse can have maybe two floors so it's the luxury apartment or the luxury room. They're bigger. You've got more space. You've got a nice view out. You might have a terrace. I have it never. Costs a lot more. I have never stayed in a pen, penthouse suite ever. I think never. I did once in a hotel oh, in Malaysia. Oh, sure, I did. Very nice. Uh, but apparently, it's come. It used to be. It used to mean sloping roof, because uh, apparently the penthouse on the top of a a big building it used to be that like the, the place that covered up all the all the machinery and the, the lift shaft, top of the lift shafts and things like that. But nowadays it means a, a very exclusive mm. place to live at the top of a big block of flats. Or a nudie magazine. Or a nudie magazine. Well, I don't know if that even exists anymore. Yeah, of course it does. Does it? All right. So People I've still heard. buy nudie magazines. So I've heard. Well, you've got the internet. The there is the internet, Steve. This is That's thing. what I mean. Do people still buy magazines anymore? I don't know. I don't think they do. It's all on the internet now. And my, 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 my knowledge... Well, so I believe. My knowledge of nudie magazines with naked ladies inside, it, trust me, I, I know very little about it. How about Acid House, Mr Duncan? Acid! Acid House. Acid! Or just uh, Acid. <laughs> You don't need to have the house on there. You see? You just say with acid house. It's a type of music from the late 80s and early 90s. Disco music uh, with a certain Disco? Sort of electronic. Well, it's dance music, isn't it? It's dance music with an electronic sort of mesmerising beat to it. Hypnotic sound uh, that is normally associated with people taking the drug ecstasy. Yes, acid house, sort of euphoric music that people will dance all night to. Yes, I'm just trying and to. They will take. I know. Yeah, they will take ecstasy. I'm just trying to do. It. That's that's acid house. Acid house. I don't know if it's still around. Is it still around acid house <laughs> it was, music? It was very big in the 1990s, it was very and, big and in this the 1990s. this T-shirt, this symbol. Was was the symbol of acid house music? You're joking. 
no i'm not joking that's why i'm saying it so why are you wearing a are you promoting drug use mr well, duncan well the smiley face was around for many years before then so this first appeared in the 1960s and it was invented by forrest gump forrest gump invented this i saw it in the movies i don't think you should wear that that's not very appropriate now i know that mr duncan i i you know i think that's very bad it's very bad i'm going to put you in the doghouse <laughs> You see what I did there? <laughs> the doghouse. I, I certainly heard what you did. <laughs> the doghouse. If you put somebody in the doghouse, it means you're punishing them. Punishing them for bad behaviour. Where did you get that from? <laughs> Have you been looking through my words? No. I, you've the, been looking through my words. These are actually ones that I found on my own. Just in case you didn't use them. Oh, so well, you see, I'm too clever for you, Mr. Duncan. So I know them all. To be in the doghouse. To be in the doghouse, it means that you've... Uh, it means that you've done something to upset somebody. Uh, normally, the uh, the husband is in the doghouse mm. uh, with his wife because he's he's done something to upset his wife, and his wife's not talking to. It doesn't mean you're literally going into a into where the dog is. It means that you're being punished. It means that no. nobody, somebody's not talking to you, or yes. they're uh, or, or they're punishing you. It's a it's, it's a figure of speech. It's a figure of speech. Yes. Oh. So. My wife's, uh, I'm not going back home till later because I'm in the doghouse at yes. home. Or maybe maybe the husband came back the night before very late. Yes. And so the next morning, the wife is very angry. Where were you last night? Where were you last night? You didn't get back home until, until one o'clock in the morning. Where were you? Oh, Where shut up. I'll do what I like. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> He'll be nagged at a bit. Yes. So then the husband will be in the doghouse. Yes. It just means that, uh, you know, if you if you if you if a dog's been naughty, you go, go into your basket, go into your basket. You, you send the dog in there for punishment Yes, or into the kennel or into the kennel. <laughs> yes. Uh, so there we go in the to be in the doghouse. Uh, you could be in the doghouse with your boss at work. Oh, you OK. Could say, oh, well, uh, well, because you didn't do that project. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that I didn't finish the project on time. And uh, the boss has told me off. Oh, I've got to be careful. I'm in the doghouse with my boss at the moment. It means that you're 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 not uh, you're not being looked upon particularly favourably yes. at that moment. You are you are you have a black mark against you. A black mark, and you might have to do something. So, for example, if the husband is in the doghouse with his wife because he was late back, or had too much to drink the night before, or or, or wasn't home in time to take her out to to have her hair done or to go out to the party, then uh, you might have to buy some flowers or some chocolates to uh, to get yourself back in favour and out of the doghouse. You seem to have a lot of knowledge of of, of marriages. Only uh, and that's pretty hmm. good for a person who isn't married. That's pretty well, you can know about it. That's pretty amazing. You, you seem to have a lot of insight. Well, that's all the house ones. OK, then. That I can think of. Anybody, have you got one that you've thought of that I haven't? I have one here to have a few loose tiles. Well, that's not a house. I haven't well, come on to tiles yet. Yes. Oh, OK, then. Well, well, tiles are on a roof. Tiles are on a roof. Yes, a roof. go on then. You see? So, so yes, to have a few loose tiles. There aren't any loose tiles on that roof. No. Well, that's just showing you what tiles are. So, there you can see tiles. To have a few loose tiles. This is a great expression. So, this means to be a little bit odd or maybe a little crazy or maybe your behaviour is a little strange or maybe... You might not be very clever. You might say that that person seems to have a few loose tiles. All ah, right. OK. Well done, yes, Mr. Duncan. Yes, well done. Yes. I wondered how long it'd take you to come up with that one. You want another one? Go on. OK, then. Then there is to doorstep someone. That's nothing to do with house. Again, there's a doorstep on your house. Oh, I thought we were talking about buildings. When you walk into the house, there is a doorstep. It what is does that the... mean to door doorstep somebody? If you doorstep... Treat them badly. No. If you just let me actually say what it is. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> to doorstep someone means that you, you actually harass them at their door. Ah. So you won't leave them alone. So, for, for example, if you are a famous actor... And maybe you've done something bad. Maybe 
the reporters will go to your house and they will doorstep you oh. that means they will go onto your doorstep and they will harass you at your front door ah so, so princess diana famous people being doorstepped have you been doorstepped mr duncan i have all your youtube fans around the world i have never been doorstepped i've had my door kicked in a few times but really? never i've never been doorstepped <laughs> Well done for coming up with a few words that I didn't, mm. Mr. Duncan. I've got another one. Another one? Yeah. I've still got a pile down here. OK, then. I'll do one more of mine and then you can do yours. Here's another one. Put it on the slate. They're all to do with tiles and roofs, aren't they? No, they're they, not. Well, doorstep isn't. Put it on the slate. <laughs> Who puts their doorstep on the roof? <laughs> That's not a very easy way to get into your house. So door, put it on the slate. Of course, slates are also on the roof. It's another word for tiles. And they're quite often, unlike those, they're flat. Yes. And you can write on them. Yes. And also... Like a tablet. Another word for tile in American English is... Do you know? No. Shingle. Shingle? Shingle. So right. if you if in American English tiles roof tiles are known as shingles shingles so put it on the shingles then put it on the slate is something that's used in British English and that's the reason why we say slate if you put it on the slate it means you ask someone to take credit so you don't pay for something straight away you say, can you put it on the slate? Normally used in bars or pubs. Ah. So when you order a drink, they will say, oh, can I have a pint of beer? Oh, and uh, can you put it on the slate? It means I won't pay for it now. At the end of the month, I will give you all of the money that I owe you. So put it on the slate. So we use that normally in British English. So like put it on the bill. Hmm. But put it on the slate, presumably re referring to in ancient times where you would literally have a slate, like a like a like a, a thin uh, piece of rock uh, that you would write things on with chalk. Yeah, that's it. A slate, something that's you can it. write things on. So yes, like a well, menu. Well, in fact, that's what they used to do here. So in the bar, they would actually have something where they would put people's names and how much they owed and on a so slate. literally it was on the slate probably probably a, a slate a welsh slate which is a gray dark gray uh material used for for putting on roofs of houses so it's flat hmm. isn't it and but That's you it. can use chalk and you can write on it like a blackboard it looks yes. like a blackboard so put it on the slate put it on the slate well done well done well okay. done mr okay. duncan so now it's your well turn done. it's my I turn is it can I we look hope... at the live chat Oh, you want to look at the live chat? OK, then. We've only got 20 minutes left. Have you got a video to show as well? <laughs> yes, I have. I've got... We're, we're going to have a look at Steve going crazy with his autumn madness. You might think... I thought you were going to, to use uh, a few loose tiles uh, as, as the, the way into the, the, uh, the video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely got a few loose tiles. Is, is this a sentence? Use of, there we go, yeah. So here we go then. Right. Ooh. So Philippe says, I am going to meet with my English speaking boyfriend. We'll communicate by Google Translate, probably. Oh, well, have a nice time, whatever so you do. Have a nice time, Philippe, with your English speaking boyfriend. And also Caraga Caradas. That sounds like a friend with benefits. Caradas says shingle is a rectangular wooden tile used on walls or roofs. Yes. So normally shingle is used in American English. So I hope that is fine there. I hope we all agree on that. So, Steve, do you have something else to show us? I do. I hope so. I have got words now uh, talking about building bridges. Oh, OK. Bridges. So all of these are to do with bridges. All of these are to do with bridges. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So. Cross the bridge or cross that bridge. Oh. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. I it's like a it. Phrase that we use a lot in the UK. It means resolve a problem when it occurs. Focus on focus on the issues that need to be sorted now. Uh, 
not things that may or may not happen in the future. Wait until the problem comes up and then solve it rather than anticipating a problem. It's often used as advice. It's often used a phrase for advice to somebody to stop them worrying about something that hasn't yet happened or may not happen. So, for example, what will I do if I fail the English exam? You might ask somebody and they might reply, don't worry, cross that bridge when you come to it. Mm -hmm. So you might not fail the English exam, so don't worry about that now. Cross that. If you do fail it, we'll sort something out. We'll solve it afterwards. You might need to take the, le the exam again or something like that. Yes. Uh, so, yes, you, you could say I'm going for a job interview. Uh, oh, I, I, but what happens if I fail the job interview? I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm not going to be able to afford to pay the mortgage on my house, blah, blah, blah. Somebody might say, well, don't worry. Cross that bridge when you come to it. So don't worry about what might happen. Just concentrate on what you can control and what you can do now. It's a phrase that people use to stop you worrying about things. Mm -hmm. Cross that, well, cross that bridge when we come to it. So don't worry about it now. We will worry about it when the time arrives. That's it. So, for example, I might have said to Mr. Duncan, "Well, oh, I've got all these words about bridges and, and buildings. What happens if I if I if I miss out to what will people think? You know, what will happen? And you might say, well, don't worry, Mr. Steve, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There we go. Build bridges. Oh, OK. Build, I don't mean literally build bridges. So this is, again, figurative. Figurative. Yes. Uh, metaphorically, not literally. Uh, that means to, to build bridges with something or someone means to improve relationships between people or groups of people who may not like each other or may not get on very well. You're, you might, you're trying to, just like you're trying to connect the two sides of a river by building a bridge, you're trying to connect two groups of people together who don't see eye to eye, they don't get on very well, they've got a a difference of opinion and you're trying to find a way of, of, of finding common ground to to because you, you want to get on with these people because if you don't you don't want to be warring or fighting all the time no let's find some common ground and build some bridges it means finding common ground or something that you can you can communicate with that, that in fact shows that you're probably not that different after mm. all after their breakup john is trying to build bridges again with his wife so they've broken up over something and now he's trying to probably phoning her up, sending her letters or something like that, trying to get some common ground so that they can communicate again. So I think but, at some point, at some point, uh, John must have been in the doghouse. That's it. Well, yes, it's a bit worse than that. Uh, the, 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 the two rival political parties will have to build bridges if they are going to solve the country's problems. Mm. So political parties don't get on, but there's some important things that needs, like Brexit, for yes. example. They've got to build bridges and stop fighting each other because they need to solve some problems. We can Building say that bridges. we can say that you you heal the divide. Heal the divide, build bridges. Mm. It means you're just finding some common ground. Yes, that's good. Uh, well, here's another one: uh, burn bridges or burn your bridges. We all do this. We all do this uh, or burn your bridge. It means to destroy the possibility of ever going back to something or someone by doing something un really unforgivable. Mm. Uh, so if you burn your bridges, it means you can never go back. Mm. Uh, you might have a friend, you fall out, you punch them in the face, break their teeth and they go to hospital. There's, uh, and you know th th that's it. You're never going to be able to go back again after that. So... Here's another. I can never work for that company again. I burnt my bridges with the boss when I criticised him openly on social media. Yes. Another way of doing that, of course, is to just resign from your job. So you say maybe you have a great career and your job is successful and you earn a lot of money and you go, oh, what a great life. And then a new boss arrives and you hate him. And one day you have a fight. Yes. And you go, OK, I've had enough of you. I resign and you walk out. But the next day you kind of regret it. You regret saying those things. But it's too late because you have already burnt that bridge. You can't go back. 
That's it. It's often used as advice, isn't it? Sometimes mm. people will say, hmm, yes, I don't burn your bridges with that job because, uh, you know, make sure when you leave, it doesn't have to be a job, we're using job as an example, uh, you don't like the job, you hate the job, you hate the boss and all the people working there. So you get another job, but somebody says, you know, don't, don't leave on bad terms, don't burn your bridges because something might change and you might want to go back mm. there in later years. Well, so that's, in, that's interesting. Uh, Jimmy says, just like this live chat, we, we all build bridges between us. Exactly. Isn't that great? Exactly. I love I love that. Thank you very much, Jimmy, for that. The live chat today, by the way, is very. It's very busy. Very busy. Can I show another one, Mr. Duncan? You may, Mr. Steve, because I will let you. <laughs> water under the bridge. Oh, yes. It's water under the bridge. Something has passed and it's not important anymore. Something you can't change it. Something's happened. You can't change it. But it's not important anymore. You can't change it. I didn't mean to say what I did. You fall out with somebody. You fall mm. out with them, have an argument. And you're trying to get back together again. And you say, oh, I'm sorry for what I said. Please, can you forgive me? Uh, can't we just say it's water under the bridge? Mm. Can't let's, we? let's forget it. It's a bit like saying, let's let bygones be bygones. Let sleeping dogs lie. Yes. <laughs> I didn't mean what. It's just water under the bridge. You use that as an expression when something's happened, but you can't change it. Uh, but you're trying to, you know, just let's get over it. Let's it's water under the bridge. Mm. Forget it. We had our disagreement. Let's forget it. It's all in the past. It's all water under the bridge. There we go. I've got some more, but do you want to have a little break before we do it? We're going to have a break because Steve yesterday went crazy. 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 Absolutely nuts. I've got some loose tiles. Yeah, I think Steve definitely has some loose tiles on his roof. <laughs> yesterday, Steve went crazy. He was suffering from something called autumn madness. <laughs> Yes, that looks like a very severe case of autumn madness. Yes, indeed, we are here and it's a very misty afternoon. Look at the view at the moment. You can see it is very misty out there, Steve. It is. Yes, so that is a live view at the moment from my studio window. And you can see the sun is starting to set. The colours are turning orange. The leaves look very autumnal. Everything is very atmospheric. I think that's a good way of describing it. So autumn is definitely here. It is late afternoon early evening here in the UK about another hour of sunlight and then the sun will disappear and we will also be disappearing in 10 minutes 10 minutes I've got a few more words to get in before then Mr Duncan okay Steve uh, I was going to roll naked in that uh, I, do you know I actually wanted to do it I, I wanted to take all my clothes off and just roll naked in the leaves there's something earthy there's something uh, I don't know what it is. It's like it's like it's a strange atmosphere at that time of the year. You just want to be close to nature and sort of roll around in it. So so I think Mr. Steve is not so much a naturalist. He's more a naturist. No, I don't want to show me bits. Right, here we go. Bricks and mortar. OK. Bricks and mortar. Uh, well, a building, of course, is constructed of bricks. Uh, and the mortar, like the cement in between, holding it all together. 
So bricks and mortar is something substantial. Mm. What we're referring to here is something is actually a building, uh, uh, something visible, substantial, uh, has an inherent value to it. So, for example, it's a phrase that you use. Uh, for example, he invested in bricks and mortar rather than stocks and shares. So it means that he put his money into something solid, into a building. Bricks and mortar, we just literally mean it's a building. There's mm. no metaphor there. We are literally meaning a building. Yes. And uh, we, we use it quite often to just describe something that's solid or something that has mass or has structure. So we're, we're talking about the actual solid part of something, the bricks and mortar. So, yes, you're right. It's it's generally used when we are talking about buying a house, buildings, own, owning a house. You own the bricks and mortar. It means the house belongs to you. Yes, I don't uh, You You can say as well that uh, you can describe describe a company. Uh, you can say that company is a bricks and mortar company. Mm -hmm. It means it has a head office a building mm. and branches made of you know buildings as mm. opposed to for example an internet based company which yes. isn't made brick that's not a you wouldn't describe no. that as a bricks and mortar company like amazon like amazon well they have buildings but no but, but yes. yes but they don't have a shop that you go into that's so it there's no physical shop so you, there isn't a doorway although having said that in some places there are now amazon shops so oh, right. <laughs> I suppose I should be careful what I'm saying there. So when you when you refer to some bricks and mortar in that way, you just literally mean a building and you usually say, oh, I'm I would rather invest in if you've got lots of money to invest somebody somewhere, you, you've got various choices. You can buy buildings with it or you can put it on the stock market mm. or put it in the bank. Uh, but if you invest in bricks and mortar, it means you're investing in buildings. Have you got a roof over your head? Ah, a roof. Very a good. A roof over your head. So obviously it's a home, a shelter. Have you a roof over your head mean, literally means a house or somewhere where you live. You've got somewhere you're covered up from the elements. So it's a basic need like food and water. Having a roof over your head, having shelter is a basic need, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've lost my job. And I've got no money to buy food, but at least I've got a roof over my head. You often hear people say things like that. Uh, I want us to pay for the mortgage on the house as quickly as possible, because then no matter what happens, even if I lose my job, we'll always have a roof over our heads. Mm. So you just you just mean it's just a phrase that you use to mean you've got somewhere to live. Yes. Or maybe you offer a homeless person. You offer them a roof over their head. Yes. You offer to take them in. You offer some accommodation for them. You want to give them a roof over their head. Yes, Caradas. Bricks and mortar, not castles in the sky. OK. Not, uh, not something, something definite, something that you can see. If you want to put your money into something, people say you can't go wrong putting your money into bricks and mortar. Mm because it will always be there. That's it. Whereas the internet, uh, sorry, if you invest in stocks and shares, they might plummet in value. Yes. Or you, the, 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 uh, uh, if you put your money in a bank, the bank might go bust. You might lose all your money. Mm. Whereas if you've got your money invested in property, it'll always be safe yes. in bricks and mortar. And also you have a nice place to stay at night. You can sleep in a house with a roof over your head. That's it. We've only got time for maybe maybe oh, two more. Reckon, yes, three more. Okay, three more, then because the, the last one I'm going to save the last one for. Uh, right here we go. Okay then. Raise the roof. Oh, okay. Raise the roof. That means to create a boisterous disturbance, an uproar, uh, a performance. To raise the roof could be reckless as well. Uh, oh, it's you know it's equivalent to raise a ruckus. In America, they say raise a ruckus. Ruckus. They do. I love uh, that. To react or protest heartily to something. Uh, when Ronaldo scored the winning goal in the football match, the fans raised the roof. It means they created so much noise and uproar mm. that the roof was literally lifted off its foundations. 
you don't mean that literally the you mean they created so much noise that mm. it, it the, the strength and power of it could literally raise the roof off mm. so it's uh, again figurative it's figurative that's right the opera singer raised the roof with her performance so her scene was so powerful she raised the roof uh, but yes it's normally referred to large crowds of people creating such a noise uh, building blocks oh. building blocks okay now I'm not really re building blocks you could say are like bricks bricks are the building blocks of a building the, the the most substantial part the basic elements the most important part of something or or reduced to its basic constituents obviously a building is made of bricks hmm. uh, that's that's the the building blocks of a house unless it's made of wood Yes, the, th the, the, the foundation of something. Uh, but you can have, using it figuratively or not literally, uh, you can have the, the building blocks of life. You can describe something, if you say the building blocks of life, you mean, well, there's various ways of, uh, of describing that. But if you say, what are the building blocks of life? You can say they are sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen and calcium uh, carbon sorry carbon so those molecules sulfur phosphorus oxygen they are the build they are the elements that form all the basic mm. building blocks that form all your molecules and everything in your body that form the cells that form the organs that form everything so we say that the building blocks of life the building blocks of life but you can say you can say cells are the building blocks of, mm. of life as well or you can say dna is or the nucleic acids are the building blocks of yes. dna but it, it means that the, the an important constituent that makes up yes. the whole of something else. so so lots of one small thing make up something larger that's it you can have the building blocks of success so the building blocks of success are hard work and uh, perseverance you could say so it doesn't have to be actual things it can be used in that way as well a company uh, you can say the building blocks of this company are the are the talents of the and the people that work for us mm -hmm. see what I'm saying there yes very good the important things, the things that make it important. Uh, so in a minute, mm -hmm. Mr. Duncan is going to leave and I'm going to leave and we can use the expression then. Elvis has left the building. Mm -hmm. El are you with me? I'm with you. <laughs> Elvis has left the building, which is a phrase that means the show's over, the party's over, Everybody go home. Go and do what you were doing before. No good s hanging around after Mr. Duncan says, what do you say at the end of your show? Mr. I Duncan? normally I normally That's say half an hour. Why did you ask me? I, well, I couldn't remember. And you might think, oh, well, oh, is he really gone? I'll just hang on. But somebody might come and I might I, somebody could come along and say, no, Elvis has left the building. Because that, that what that phrase comes from is because when people used to go to Elvis Presley concerts, yeah. apparently, uh, after he left and he's done his encore, they kept thinking he was coming back for more and somebody had to go out and say, go home, Elvis has left the building. In other words, there's no point in hanging around any longer. It's all over. Show's over. It's gone. The end. So, Not worth staying anymore. OK. Time to leave. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. As you can see, the clock is saying four o'clock. So Elvis has left the building and it's a phrase you can use in a, in a party or in a work if there's a meeting and people are hanging around you know you can say oh, you know that if there's an important person and they leave it's all over you know it, the party there could be somebody who's the life and soul of the party and they've gone and there's no point hanging around somebody might say Elvis has left the building he died on the toilet okay Elvis he died on the toilet so in a minute's time, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve will have left the building. That's it. So we are about to leave the Internet. <laughs> so don't hang around waiting for us to come back because we won't. We Not won't until next Sunday. We won't come back until next Sunday. So we will be back next Sunday. Let's just have a quick look at the time when we are here every Sunday. Live English from two o'clock UK time. So there it is. Two p.m. UK time Bye -bye, every, Martha. Every, every Sunday.
2 p.m. UK time also you can make donations as well on the super chat and also you can donate at PayPal as well a very simple method of making a donation to help this work continue forever and ever and ever and Pedro didn't have to uh, Pedro didn't have to get rid of anyone today did he I think he did oh yes. really yes okay anyway we're going now see, see you later Steve see you later bye 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 everybody Steve is leaving the building <laughs> Mr Steve <laughs> is leaving the building let's have another look at Mr Steve going crazy yesterday Yes, it's almost time for us to go. There was Mr. Steve having fun in the leaves. And it's time for me to leave you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your company. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the past two hours of live streaming. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of the English language. Of course, that is England saying thank you for joining me today. See you next Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until the next time we meet right here on YouTube. Ta-ta for now.